I've seen Jim for 49 years, so uh, we've walked together through time as uh, teachers, as uh, coaches, as uh, vice principals, as colleagues in, in, at GW University, as principals, and now I work for him for the last 17 years. I met him on a softball field. Uh, he was playing softball at the time in the 60s. Was there anything super special about that day? No, some said he would be superintendent someday and he would win national awards, but I didn't believe them. The first time I met Jim Richmond was at La Plata High School. The summer of 66, he and I were both teaching summer school. One of the first years I was on the board, we were meeting with the county commissioners and we were talking about North Point High School <laughs> and the complex that he wanted up there. And I said to him, right in front of everybody. You know, Jim, somebody told me when you started teaching that you were gonna be the visionary that you are, I would have laughed. I said, I just am absolutely amazed at, at how he's developed this vision of education. The first time I met Jim Richmond was in September 1969 when I was starting my career at Thomas Stone High School. At the time, he was probably 25 years old. He was always more mature. He always had a bigger picture. He could always see a bigger, broader picture than we could. Mr. Richmond hired me back in September of 1978. I came in that one day in August and he hired me and next week I was here starting work. I was a student athlete and I had a chance to meet Mr. Richmond because he was the principal at Thomas Stone. And uh, he always congratulated us after the games. So I always thought of him as a very nice man. I can remember it was in January 2007. I was a vice principal at Thomas Stone High School. And Mr. Richmond, Mr. Cunningham came to Thomas Stone High School to meet with Mr. L.C. Martin, myself in my office, to let me know that I was going to be chosen principal of Davis Middle School. At first, it was very scary to me. But then I realized who my leader was and the people that he had put in place to support me as well. I said, I'll be fine. When I first began my principalship, Mr. Richmond was the supervisor for the school I was at, and he was instrumental in helping me to take on that role. I remember times when he would come in my office over issues and we would sit and um, some of our discussions were loud <laughs> as the door was closed. Um, but afterwards, we always left with um, a smile, a laugh, and an understanding. I never thought I'd have this job. I, I call myself an accidental superintendent, but also as an accidental principal, meaning I never really set out in my career to be either, and I ended up in them due to circumstances. I did not study to be a teacher. I majored in history, government, and political science, and I wanted to work for the government and the State Department. They weren't taking many people during those days, and I was referred, one of the fellows said, well, you know, they really need some teachers in the state of Maryland, and, you know, uh, your background in history and government. I got an interview in Charles County, and I came here, and I was hired. The hard part about it was trying to relate to the students, having come out of a total academic background. I couldn't understand why they couldn't be as excited about government and history as I was. And thank God I had some outstanding people around me at La Plata High School who taught me how to teach, Jack Basham and Genevieve Brown, who was head of social studies. And the first couple of years were a struggle because I had never really taught to that degree. But getting to work and develop and write lessons plans with those people and to try them out and to realize I didn't know everything and if I wasn't satisfied with the lesson, reteach it, really did a lot to help me. The kids liked him because they felt he was very sincere about his teaching. They said he was knowledgeable, bright man. He was a very inclusive coach. Uh, he was one that if, we, if the school could afford uh, 500 uniforms, he would have had 500 kids on the basketball team. If you're not a kid person, if you're not driven by dealing with children, you can't be successful. And Jim is passionate about uh, schools and students and what they're going to learn. Whenever he comes to visit, he always wants to get to see the students and the teachers and go into the classrooms. To walk in a classroom, it looks like a beehive. See kids all over the place in teams, individually, working with technology, working with the teacher, working with different groups laughing, sharing different projects. It's a lot of fun to watch them really get where school is not boring. You'll find him in a school on many occasions, talking to the students, talking to the new teachers. You find him walking through central office, 
talking to all the people and asking them questions. It's just that that's his makeup. He never forgot where he came from. He never forgot what it was like to pick up a piece of chalk or to manage 25 kids. Every teacher in the system who knows him knows that he never forgot. First of all, it's one of the best jobs in the world. You get to work directly with the staff and with kids and you can directly affect what kids learn and the whole environment is just a great experience. I look back on my 14 years as a high school principal and some of them were very, very tough. When Stone was formed, it was a, a massive redistricting. A lot of different groups were put together for the first time, so they were feeling their way also. The school had a lot of problems and we straightened those out. And I think it brought the staff together because we all worked on it together. And we all said to the students, this school is going to be safe. It's going to be an environment in which you can learn and which we can teach. And that's the motto. I came when the school was really overcrowded. And we sometimes had 2,000 kids. In my first few years, I remember that during the school year, Mr. Richmond would take over somebody's class for a couple of weeks because he didn't want us to be doing something that he wasn't doing and he wanted to he wanted to feel what we were feeling. If you were on hall duty, you saw him. If you were after school working with kids, you saw him doing the same thing. If there was a fight or a difficulty in the school, who was the first person to rush to break it up? Jim Richmond. On some level you knew that this man would walk over hot coals for this building and while he was in command of that building, you knew nothing bad would happen because he would stand, physically stand between you and whatever bad was happening. People that I worked with in those days are long gone, but the memories still are there. I look back on it, I had some of the greatest teachers and staff members, uh, secretaries, building service workers, who all became a team. We would have done anything for that man. We would have gone the extra mile. We wanted to be the best. He was a caring principal, like he is a superintendent. He really cared about the kids. He wanted the kids to be successful, just like he wants the, the county to be successful. And we just would do whatever it took. From the time I saw him even as a principal, uh, he had a tremendous gift of knowing how to manage people, how to, how to get them to respond. It's a quality that most people don't have. There's no need to send somebody like him to a leadership conference. It, it's innate. Mr. Richmond's leadership style is a leadership style that I've considered a, a whole lot like mine. It's one of those ones where he tells you what it is you need to do and he expects you to do it. You never have to worry about what he's thinking. He's going to tell you. <laughs> and I like that. I remember after my first year of teaching went in for the, my evaluation at the end of the year and so he gave me the evaluation and I said to him you sure you want me to come back I don't know why I said that but I said you sure you want me to come back he said if I don't want you here I would have fired you six months ago you know so and I never looked back because I knew that if I was doing something that he did not like I'd know about it he's like a, a uncle that you you can go in and you can sit down and you can have a conversation with. He listens and then he gives his experience to you. He talks about some of the things that happened at his school that were challenges. And it makes you realize the human side of him and that all of us do the best we can do. I think it's very important that the superintendent is the person who has been a principal before and Mr. Richmond makes it very clear that he's been in that position before and the people that he's put in those other positions in school administration have all been principals before. When I talk to my colleagues around the state, not every situation in the state is like that where a principal is allowed to grow in the position where you're where you, where you have people that you can talk to like Ms. Dorsey and Mr. Cornett. He lets you know it's okay to ask questions and to get his opinion or advice. And I think having been in that position makes you feel more comfortable that he knows what you're going through on a daily basis. And the other thing he always says to us is that you're never in this alone. You know, don't ever feel that you're out there on an island by yourself. The central office only exists to support the classroom. I'm a firmer believer in that. I came up through the ranks here many years ago. I taught here. 
I was a principal, a vice principal, I was director of curriculum, I was director of school administration, I was a regional administrator. All of that, the teacher has never left me. I'm a teacher first. Because Jim came in as a teacher and worked his way up, he understood the kids, he understood the parents, he understood the community. And when you have somebody that is that familiar with the area, they, they do a much better job. It was always a good school system. It was always a family type school system. But you can see that with the growth of the county, the school system had to take the next step. And I think that Mr. Richmond came along. He was in tune to what was needed as the 21st century started to come. When I introduced him at the 40th anniversary of Thomas Stone, I used the word serendipity. It was a lucky confluence of the right person at the right time in the right place. And that doesn't happen very often. When he came to become superintendent, the county was in a precarious kind of position. The person that had come before him had left people feeling uncomfortable, not feeling good about um, themselves being afraid to make decisions. And he came in and calmed that down. I call Mr. Richmond a superintendent of the people, and that's the reason why he's been a four-term superintendent, because of the care and concern that he showed. Since the day he stepped in, he has said, and he continues to say to this day, people are first. We're a people organization, and our people come first. I never once worry about whether or not I can get the job done at, at Lackey, because I know that I have a boss is going to make sure that we have the resources. He always says, if there's something you want, tell me what it is. I don't want any child not to have a book, not to have the supplies or what they need. And he means that from his heart. And that's now, uh, has been, ever since I've been a principal, how I close all meetings and, and all conferences is for my teachers and my staff members to let me know what you need in order to get the job done. My job is to promote and sell the school system to advocate for children, to put together the resources for the teachers to do the job, and to do the political aspects of the school system. It's going out and getting agencies like the Space Foundation engaged in the schools, working with our kids, working with our teachers. That's a lot of fun. I have outstanding people that represent me in the area of administration, instruction, and transportation, and budget, and they make decisions every day that make the school system run. Jim Richmond, he's elevated this school system far beyond where anyone around here can fully appreciate. I think Mr. Richmond's vision is one like none other. He can look into the future and see exactly what in five to ten years education is going to look like. I'm not sure that there are many people that can do what he does. We started out with having a think tank for a couple of days when this administration was put together. When, when Jim Richmond first became superintendent. After days of talking, we boiled it down to number one, the most important one, was reading. Before Mr. Richmond came, we had a menagerie of programs going on. There was not consistency. What I love is that it's not, you better be on page five on September 15th. You know, it's not that kind of approach. We have a curriculum, we have a a guide that helps teachers with knowing where to be, but also allows for some flexibility. When Mr. Richmond became superintendent, the achievement gap between African-American and white students in elementary school is probably near 30 points. And our last set of test results on MSA in 2012, it's a handful now, probably six to eight points. Does it surprise me? No. No. Because, you know, if you know Mr. Richmond, he puts his mind on something and like a laser beam and we're gonna, that's gonna happen. As you build a school, you only get one opportunity to do it. And you might as well do it right because that school's there for many, many years with hundreds of thousands of students. And that's what we try to do. We try to look at that school and we try to envision the future. The most amazing part to me is that 
he had this vision and he didn't have it on a piece of paper. He would stand up and talk about this vision and talk about it like he had walked up and down those halls already. And a lot of what he told me about Davis Middle School and how Davis Middle School would look and how it would work out was exactly how it's happened. We have grade level wings, we have related arts wings and administrative wings and it all works out perfectly. It flows very smoothly here. North Point is, uh, is an outstanding school. It's an outstanding STI school. North Point started when we were looking at the old VoTech program we had in Pomfret. I went and talked to the students in that program and I said, if you could change this, what would you do to make it better? And what is it that you feel right now creates a problem for you? Well, they said, we feel like we're third-rate citizens when we get on the Bowtech bus to come over here. We can't participate in any activities because we're half-time in both schools. I said, well, what if we had a comprehensive high school with a Bowtech component that's integrated into the total school? Wow. I think this school is a reflection of the vision that Superintendent Richmond and others had, that they saw where the economy was heading, they saw the, the need for a more highly trained and highly skilled workforce, and they also saw that kids are going to be far more interested in coming to school, in graduating from high school, if they're also learning a trade that will be valuable to them as soon as they graduate. One day, I hope sooner rather than later, all of Maryland's high schools will follow this sort of model. Even with that, he had the vision to provide programs in the other schools. And we have Project Lead the Way. Our Project Lead the Way program is fantastic. La Plata has the Biomed, one of the best in the state. St. Charles High School is an exciting thing, just like North Point was, just like Davis and Diggs. St. Charles will have the digital classroom, science on the sphere, the environmental green concepts. It will have state-of-the-art technology, but it will be used throughout the entire school system. He has fostered contacts all over the United States. He's very eager to find out what other systems are doing, what could be replicated here. Why was he the one that took us to Durham, North Carolina, to the Research Triangle, to sign an agreement with a national, international technology firm to improve the technology in our school system for our kids? Within a year of our visit to the Durham region in Cisco, we inked a partnership with Cisco Systems, and we were named their first ever Cisco flagship school system in the nation. The telepresence system has allowed us to hook into anywhere in the world. This has allowed our teachers to be able to plan together with other AP teachers all over the county. And the way that it's set up, all of the rooms look alike, so students honestly feel like they're all in the same classroom, that they're all in one classroom. The way that he embraces technology, I can't think of a person with a bigger picture, a bigger idea than Mr. Richmond has. Students have opportunities they hadn't had before. Look at the strings program that he's placed in all of the schools, from the elementary to the high school. It used to be that for a strings program, your child would have to go to a private school. But Mr. Richmond has made all of these things available to students in Charles County Public Schools. When I was in high school many, many years ago, what kept me focused in school was the drawing power of athletics because I participated in those and the different clubs. I wouldn't miss school for anything. I'd even go to school half sick because there would be an activity, there'd be something going on, there'd be a, a, a musical, a program, a club. It was sort of a magnet that kept you interested in school other than just the classroom. I want every school to have as many activities for students as we can get. I know he's very proud of the number of kids that are in the AP classes. I remember when I was teaching way back in the 60s and even when I went to school in upstate New York in high school, if you weren't what they called bright or gifted, you didn't take AP. One of the things I wanted to do was break those barriers and that everybody can do AP, everybody can do science and math, 
It's just application. You've got to be willing to do that. I think Mr. Richmond was a superintendent at Charles County Public Schools when Charles County Public Schools grew tremendously. When the county started building lots of new houses and a lot of people moved into the county, Mr. Richmond was not one of those people who became afraid and decided, oh my God, what are we going to do now? He just took the ball and he ran with it. We never had to furlough people. I think that's phenomenal. I think people really don't understand how strong his leadership was during that particular time. People did not have to worry about the fact that, you know, Mr. Richmond cut jobs like some of the other county. He didn't do that. He's been an outstanding manager of our resources. Some of the awards, I'm not sure a lot of our folks have, have ever realized that he has received such things as annual Daisy Bates Award. That's from the National NAACP for doing the most to close the achievement gap. The most humble I've ever seen him was when he received that Space Foundation Award. He was just so overwhelmed. I think if you talk to Jim, he would tell you that's, a, that's the greatest achievement he ever had in terms of personally, because he received a lot of other awards, Superintendent of the Year and so forth, but being chosen as the only superintendent ever to be picked by the group, it's quite an honor. I have never seen the man receive an award that he didn't immediately say thank you and start listing all the people who did the work. I don't think Jim thinks he's deserving of all these accolades that we give him and, and that's probably is a real important leadership trait to have. He's not an arrogant person. Mr. Burns, How are can you? you believe this was my high school teacher? Yeah. Long I time ago, wasn't it? <laughs> Back in 69. Wasn't that long ago. I would like to use somewhat of a layman's term or a term that some of the kids would use. He's just real. Uh, Mr. Richmond is so real. He gives it to you straight, but he's approachable. It's not one of those people you're afraid to go and talk to. Jim is a very private person, a very caring person. He doesn't really get into the social arena, but he's passionate about his work. As long as I've known him as superintendent, he doesn't take a lot of time off. He's at work. He loves to go out and see what's going on in the schools. I, I think if he could go in a school and be there every day, he'd be there every day. I think a lot of folks would probably be surprised to find out how technologically advanced he is. He is just a, a very avid reader. He's always, always reading history books. Mr. Richmond can, can tell some good jokes from time to time or make some unexpected comments. The holiday party when Mr. Wyman wears his plaid suit. There's, there's, no, there's no letting up on, on that. Mr. Richmond just waits for it, you know, and he just knows it's coming, and it's, you got your horse blanket on. That's one of the times he threatens me that I don't listen to him. <laughs> it's fun to be in a conversation, sometimes on the non-receiving end of these things. My first year as a principal at Lackey High School, we had a Freedom Day event at Lackey High School. So he came over. So our ROTC was on stage. We had this drill with the rifles going back and forth. And the rifle came about six inches from hitting Mr. Richmond. And I said, oh my God, I can't get far in within the first two months. I've taken the superintendent out on my stage. When he became superintendent, he came to visit Stone, to visit classrooms and bring, and I said, uh, Mr. Richmond, it's very good to see you here. And he said, still Jim. You know me as Jim, I'm still Jim. I love that chuckle. You know, when he, he just kind of laughs at things and his eyes kind of light up and, and you know that he is seeing underneath what you're saying and uh, getting the humor of it. I think that he really has a good outlook on life. What did you do, come all the way up? Yeah. It came to me over the last year. It's just a mental process. You know, you wake up one morning, you wonder if you're contributing anymore. It's one of those things that we know when it's the time for a change. This is a perfect time for the school system. It allows the new people to come in with their own people and do their own thing. It's just time. You know, you just have to know when that time is. I think he deserves to retire. I think numbers don't lie. And I think when you reach a certain age, you don't have the physical energy anymore. So on the one hand, I can understand his decision to retire. I don't like it, but I can understand it. He never left the system. He lived and breathed the goodness of the system. How can I bring this system further? He never ever saw it as a road to somewhere else. I will miss his vision. 
I believe that everybody has a vision, but it's very difficult to help others to understand your vision. And I find that that's what Mr. Richmond is best at, is to tell others of what his vision is and help you to implement it. I think Mr. Richmond's been one of the outstanding school superintendents in our state. His vision, his curiosity, the, the fact that he embraces technology. Mr. Richmond saw that technology is the wave of the future and that technology can be used to enrich the student experience and to make the learning environment far more dynamic and far more vibrant. So I think he's been a tremendous leader. I think I'm going to miss the, the fact that Mr. Richmond is certainly an approachable person. Um, I've seen some people in high positions at times who don't make it their business to come around and shake every principal's hand at the principal's meeting. He stands there and he makes sure that everybody is greeted. Anybody can come up and speak to. I'm going to miss his honesty uh, and, and the, the fact that he's got an open door. If I, if I need to talk to him, I can just walk in and, and sit down and have a conversation. He will drop what he's doing and, and have that conversation with me, and he does that with most people. Except for one year at Stone, he's been my boss for 34 out of the 35 years that I've been here. So I'll miss him. I'll miss somebody that I can go and talk to if I have a problem. I'll miss his leadership style. I'll miss his vision. And I'd like to think I'm, I'm going to miss a friend. I never once uh, worry about whether or not I can get the job done at, at Lackey because I know that I have a boss that's going to make sure that we have the resources. So I, I think security in the fact that I know that I can do my job because He's making sure that the system is taken care of. He's an icon. He's an icon that will, will uh, be around for a long time. I hope his programs remain. I hope the direction the school system is going can, is continued. Charles County has been really good to me. I've had a great career here. There's some wonderful people in Charles County. There are some people who amaze me with their dedication and commitment to others. That people stop you on the street and say, thank you for a great job. And I've had a lot of people do that. Uh, thank you for doing a great job. And you know, the hard part of it is leaving the, the teachers and the staff to people. It's about people, it's not about things. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. I like giving people a vision that we developed and then energize it. Most people dream dreams, but they never implement them. I've had that pleasure of implementing almost every dream or vision that we've had for our children.